to speak. Okay, that's better. Thank you. Is a practical guide to restraints and, in particular, elbow in Phoenix. So, what is Phoenix? Phoenix is many things, and you can read all about it in the current paper from 2019 listed at the bottom. Foremost, it's a package for solving macromolecular structures in the field of X-ray crystallography, neutron diffraction, and cryo-EM. It is a collaboration with primarily the people and sites shown here, but the complete list extends to many others. A major goal of Phoenix is to automate structure solution. These are the steps commonly taken by an X-ray solution from data quality to deposition. Different parts of the process require restraints and chemical restraints are generally uh, supplied by ELBO. What is ELBO? It is a program in Phoenix that is responsible for the generation of restraints. Chemical restraints specifically, which implies that novel ligands are its primary fodder. As you can see from the schematic, chemical input is used to generate restraints in SIF format and a geometry file in, amongst others, PDB format. The restraints are then used in any of the refinement packages in Phoenix. You can learn more about Elbow and other Phoenix programs on YouTube. Search for Phoenix Elbow or Phoenix Tutorial for our channel. Speaking of chemical input, not all chemical inputs are created equal. These two on the left, PDB and XYZ, generally lack connection information, so the extra steps of bond detection and bond order determination can be required. The only acceptable PDB is one containing both hydrogen atoms and bond connect records. An additional use of the PDB is that it contains atom names. The three formats on the right are examples that contain useful bonding information. The most information dense is the SIF file from the Chemical Components Library, which we will discuss later. If you have a three-letter code of an entity, you can access the smile string bond information and atom names via this code. The end result is a 3D geometry and a list of internal coordinates that can be exported as restraints. One of the features of Elbow is that it can take multiple inputs and glean the appropriate information from each. The Chemical Components Library is a resource provided by the PDB and distributed in Phoenix. There is an entry for every code used in the PDB for a chemical species. I should point out that there are caveats. Each entry contains the smiles and two sets of coordinates. The first is an actual set of coordinates from a PDB entry. The second is a set generated to be ideal. Both have their shortcomings, so caution is advised. Another important piece of information is the list of atoms, which are needed for generation of restraints so the refinement package can do the dictionary style lookup of the atoms. Elbow, by default, optimizes the geometry, but sometimes a specific geometry is desired or required. Using the three letter code on the command line, it is very simple to access the geometry in the chemical components library file. You don't need to have a file path, which is the usual argument for the final geometry option. You can just supply the same three letter code as the chemical components code. You can use the dash dash use PDBX ideal option to access the ideal geometry calculated by the PDBX. This can also be useful for metal clusters, but you should always check as the deposited geometry is just that, a deposited geometry and an ideal is a calculated geometry. Always check. More use of the chemical components library comes with the dash dash initial geometry option. It is similar to the final geometry option in that it takes one of the geometries in the chemical components library and, and supplies it as a starting geometry to another optimization procedure. 
all quantum packages have a relatively small radius of convergence with relatively expensive steps. So the closer to the answer, the better for QM. This is also useful for optimizing to a local minima. Mogul also benefits from an accurate geometry, so the minus minus Mogul option automatically uses the initial geometry from the chemical components library. What is Mogul? Mogul is part of the Cambridge Structural Database for Cambridge Crystallographic Data Centre. Most universities have a license for it, so you should contact your local chemistry department or maybe the computer centre for information. Once installed, you can generate restraints and validate geometries in the comfort of your own computer. Particularly useful because Mogul is used by the PDB to validate ligands deposited by users. The GEO standard is the restraints library shipped with Phoenix along with a stripped down version of the monomer library. In the latest versions of Phoenix I have added over 16,000 entities calculated with the QM method PBE-C3 along with a solvent model. All entities have been validated by Mogul and are available on GitHub. In addition, 3600 low pH entities have been added. These are the fully protonated entities as specified by the chemical components library. The other entities have been adjusted to account for the common pH levels in protein crystals. Linking covers any connection of a chemical nature between two different entities. In the case of metal coordination, the automatic procedures are improving, but using the metal coordination program will provide edits to allow manual manipulation. As demonstrated by the PDB and their remediation of carbohydrates, using small reusable units, in that case monosaccharides, is preferable. Oligosaccharides are made up of a number of monosaccharides linked to create the model. The same holds for large detergents or small peptide chains, even when beta and gamma linking is involved. Using reusable units has advantages. There are three types of linking. The first and easiest for the user is automatic linking performed by the program, which includes protein chains, RNA DNA, carbohydrates, and other links in an ad hoc fashion. The second is the use of a SIF link format to specify how two entities will be bound. This includes bonds, angles, torsions, chirals, and planes. There are a number of them in the distribution, including the very link that are used for automatic procedures to perform the peptide links, including disulfide bridges. This approach requires a file to select the two entities involved. This file can specify a SIF link distributed with Phoenix or a user-created SIF link file. Both files are documented in the Phoenix documentation. The third is a more manual direct format for linking that is useful in cases of a single simple link in a model or an ad hoc additional link for more complicated multiple linked cases. This is the if all else fails option. There is also a suitable option for metal coordination as it has a slack option that allows a completely flat potential over a reasonable range. By way of further explanation, on the left is the contents of a file for linking a magnesium of chlorophyll A to a histidine. There is a bond loop specifying a bond between the Mg in the first entry specified in the first group of the file on the right to the Ne2 of the histidine. There is also an angle loop using similar nomenclature. The second group on the right applies the standard cis-peptide link to two amino acids. Edits are more atom specific as can be seen by the selection that specifies an atom rather than a residue in the previous method. This is an example of a similar Mg to Ne2 of histidine. Some general advice when it comes to generating restraints in Phoenix. Try to use the correct three-letter code for the entity. This helps with restraints generation as discussed earlier. 
It also means that others can easily understand what your model contains and it may help with deposition. The PDB of course has very sophisticated code to ensure that there's no duplication and they will bounce back uh, a corrected model for you to endorse. If you get a model file, check that it is parsing correctly. The command phoenix.pdb interpretation is the geometry engine for all Phoenix refinement programs. So you can check your model quickly without using experimental data. Running it with this command and options creates a geo file, which can be used to determine if the link is extant. Getting an unused three letter code can be done by using the command line elbow.get new ligand code. Supply a character or two will narrow the search and supplying three will check if the code exists. More advice. The geo file as created by either Phoenix refinement program or by the uh, command on the previous slide is the ground truth for chemical restraints. Refinement programs will write it at the beginning of the run and optionally at the end. The first can help with link detection and the latter with how well the link has behaved during the refinement. Visualization programs try to interpret their input and represent it to the user. No visualization program reads the .geo file. So using a visualization program for validation of links in Phoenix is fraught. Because Qt uses the link record to show a link, Phoenix in many cases writes a link into the output model. If the link record is not in the model, then the .geo file should be checked. When working on thorny restraints issues, please ask for help once you have made a good faith effort. Working to the point of exasperation helps neither of us. You'll get prompt help and it may be much easier or completely in a different direction. As I've already shown my acknowledgements and my collaborators, uh, I would say thanks for listening and are there any questions? Yes, I am indeed. Okay, great. I can see you and I can hear you. Um, so there's one question from Slack, which um, from David Aragal um, asking a question that I think he asked to um, Eleanor earlier in the day as well, which is, um, says he recalls a discussion initiated by James Holton and the bulletin board about um, different refinement programs using different dictionary targets um, and therefore give results that are inconsistent. And at times they have large numbers of maybe small errors that build up creating strain. Um, do you envisage that we should be moving instead to some kind of molecular dynamics or quantum mechanics methods at this stage? Um, bearing in mind that computing is less of a problem these days. Uh, I would agree with, with the assessment, but um, practically it's very difficult. Um, we are at, in Phoenix working on making an ensemble refinement uh, much easier and much more accessible. So that the point that computer time is becoming um, less expensive and that if we can improve the ensemble refinement, it is a step in that direction. Okay, great. Um, another question is, um, can the automatic ligand linking be overwritten? Um, uh, does it, uh, when I add the link restraints in my SIF file, phoenix.refine returns an error, while this wasn't the case with former phoenix.refine versions. Uh, oh, well, that's unfortunate. Uh, that user should certainly contact me straight away. Um, yes, you can overwrite any um, any automatic restraints. There is a, a fill scope that lets you control very detailed levels of, uh, you know, which types of uh, re automatic restraints you want to turn on and turn off. I think there's about six different uh, flags that you can operate with. Um, but the fact that the the the, um, the behavior has changed uh, certainly needs my attention. So they should contact me. Okay, you can see that message in Slack if you want to follow up on it. I will try and find it. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I guess I should point out to everyone that uh, Paul Paul Emsley commented in the chat to say that Coot does read the the geo files after all.
Yeah, that's very interesting. Paul never communicated that to me, and I'd certainly like to see uh, an example. I mean, the command or how to do that. Oh, I see. It's a. Um, it's. A, it's a um, it's a command from the processing thing. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Clemens makes a very good point in the Slack channel as well. Clemens, if you're there, why don't why don't you switch your um, sound on and make your point in person? Um, yeah. So one of the dark horses when we when we compare all of these restraint generation restraint dictionaries is the contact terms, and I mean that's what I tried in my my talk even with with a slight video audio out of sync issue uh, to highlight is anything you do with this non bonded contact terms and there are different ways of handling them will have a big impact on rotor mirrors on um, angle RMS bonds um, and obviously only anything to do with clash scores in more probability um, so and, and unfortunately those contact terms we don't really have a standard way of of uh, de describing them you know we have our our bonds, angles, torsions, planes, um, etc. But the non-bonded contact term is, I think, still a bit of a building site. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. We did do a lot of in, uh, investigation into just the normal non-bonded interactions that uh, are available. We we have a few different profiles to see if they made an effect, and they do make a big effect. And um, you certainly made some new constructions in that area, Clemens. To, to continue the analogy. Okay, thanks for a bit of extra discussion. Um, so I think at that point, we are three minutes over time. So shall we pause and have a 10 minute break?